Oh, my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh, all pervading personality of God. Uh, from a respectful basis, it's up to you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire, or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire, or land seen on water. <coughs> I therefore meditate upon, uh, meditate upon him. I'm sorry. Uh, only because of him do the material universes, only because of him, the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Sivadam Tapatrayon Mulinam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Parir Ishwaraha. Kimba Parir Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hidi Avurudya Tetra. Sadyo Avurudya Tetra. Krite Bihi Susu Subis Takshanat. Krite Bihi Susu Subis Takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all the religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama Kalpataro Galitam Falam. Sukumakad Amrita Dravya Samyatam. Sukumakad Amrita Dravya Samyatam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Muhur Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavukaha. Muhur Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to your Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire to your Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Mm. 
including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swatkata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyantaksto Bhadrani Vidu Nati Srihit Satam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear uh, of from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. is in itself real, real righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nastapresu abadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki In this way, a devotee hears, uh, develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo Kama lo badayas jaye Chetir tayra navidam Sitvam sattve prasiddhati By development of devotional service one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vijnanam Mukta sangasya jayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hirdaya gramtis, chidyante sarvasam sayaha, Shiyante cha shikarmani Drista evat manishwari Drista evat manishwari Thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to at once to the stage of asamsayam samagram and enables one at once to come to the stage of samsayam Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Chapter 14, Text Number 1. <coughs> Sutta Uvacha. Samprastite Dwarakayam Samprastite Dwarakayam Jisno Bandu Didrikshaya Jisno Bandu Didrikshaya Gyatum Cha Punyal Shlokasya Gyatum Cha Punyal Shlokasya Krishnasya Cha Vichestitam Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Sri Sutta Goswami said, Arjuna went to Dwarka to see Lord Sri Krishna and other friends and also to learn from the Lord of his next activities. Purported by Srila Prabhupada. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord descended on earth for the protection of the faithful and annihilation of the impious. 
So after the Battle of Kurukshetra and establishment of Maharaj Yudhisthira, the mission of the Lord was complete. The Pandavas, especially Sri Arjuna, were eternal companions of the Lord, and therefore Arjuna went to Dwarka to hear from the Lord of his next program of work. Text 2. Vyatita katichin masas tada nayat tato rijuna tadarsa gora rupani nimittani kuru dvaha translation a few months passed and Arjuna did not return. Maharaj Yudhisthira then began to observe some inauspicious omens which were fearful in themselves. Reported by Srila Prabhupada. Lord Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is ad infinitum. That's the Latin term, means uh, toward infinity or. or but Prabhupada says, more powerful than the most powerful son of our experience. So, he's more powerful than the son, or any son. Millions and billions of sons are created by him and annihilated by him. Because there are millions and billions of universes, and there's one son in each universe. Krishna creates all that. Millions and billions of sons are created by him and annihilated by, annihilated by him. Within his one breathing period, in the material world, the sun is considered to be the source of all product productivity and material energy. And only due to the sun can we have the necessities of life. Therefore, during the personal presence of the Lord on the earth, all paraphernalia for our peace and prosperity, especially religion and knowledge, we're in full display because of the Lord's presence. Just as there is a full flood of light in the presence of the glowing sun, Maharaj Yudhisthira observed some discrepancies in the kingdom, and therefore he became very anxious about Arjuna, who was long absent, and there was also no news about Dwarka's well-being. He suspected the disappearance of Lord Krishna. Otherwise, there would have been no possibility of fearful omens. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So we can see here uh, how one can augur or perceive what's going to happen by symptoms in nature and in people and it's uh, it's a art that uh, devotees develop <clears throat> inauspicious things means meat eating gambling illicit sex intoxication preponderance of speculation and uh, feelings of personal possessiveness, argument, anger, or the three doors of hell, lust, anger, and greed. All these things are very negative omens and, portend, and, and uh, they portend inauspicious things are going to happen. So, uh, the devotees' only recourse in such a, uh, let's say, eventuality is to increase preaching, sankirtan, prasadam, and book distribution, and uh, following more strictly as much as possible the regulative principles, and especially chanting Hare Krishna. That's the only recourse we have, uh, because that's the only thing that can change the, let's say, 
uh, destiny of individual beings. Can we change the destiny of the world? No. The world is destined to appear, stay for some time, uh, grow, stay for some time, give off byproducts, dwindle, and then die. That's, that You're not going to be able to change that. But you can change the destiny of people by introducing them to Krishna consciousness and teaching them the reality of their position in the material world. What is the reality? Well, there's hints of that in the Bible. Dust thou art and dust thou shalt become, the Bible says. In other words, but there's not a clear definition or clarity of what that means. It actually means that this temporary body that you have is made of matter. And matter goes through these six stages. It's created at a certain point. It grows. It stays for some time. It gives off byproducts. It dwindles and it dies. You're not going to be able to change that process. But since we are not the body, but we have an eternal soul, Point one. Point two, uh, because we became envious of Krishna and attracted to personal sense gratification or enjoyment separate from the Lord, we fell down from the spiritual world. We're put in the material world where, we, where our soul is covered by a temporary body. And, but we have free will to decide how to use that body and how to use the material energy. If we have knowledge, given pure knowledge given through Vedic literatures and by the mercy of pure devotees, then we realize this body doesn't belong to me. My being in the material world is because I developed a desire to enjoy independently of Krishna. If I actually do that, then I'm going to be condemned to stay in the material world, birth after birth. But if I realize what is my real position, my real position is I'm the eternal servant of Krishna. Krishna is the creator of everything. Everything belongs to him. Therefore, I should only use things with knowledge of how to please Krishna in his service. Then I'm no longer touched by the laws of karma and the modes of material nature or lust, anger, and greed, these, these uh, very negative uh, feelings and desires. But if I get tricked by my own deceptive mentality to pursue sense gratification, use the body, use matter for sense gratification, then I'm going to be condemned to take repeated birth and death and no guarantee that it'll be as a human being. There are 8,400,000 species. But if I'm not fooled by my own deceptive mind and I remain steady and determined to engage in devotional service without a sense of possessiveness, see that, that key word is possessiveness. And this is emphasized in Bhagavad Gita where it says, Yogi yuk yonjita satatam atmanam rahasistitaha ekaki yata chita atma nirasir aparigraha. Very important verse, 6th chapter, 10th verse. A transcendentalist should always engage his body, mind, and self in relationship with the Supreme. He should live alone in a secluded place and should always carefully control his mind. He should be free from desires and feelings of possessiveness. Ah, this is what is the corollary, uh, or let's say the collateral effect of wanting to be independent of Krishna and enjoy independently of Krishna, we immediately develop this desire of possessiveness. This is mine. Aham mameti. 
uh, I, me, and mine syndrome or, or thoughts. This car is mine, this house is mine, this family is mine, this pen is mine, this watch is mine, this, 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 they're all mine. So this mine, mine, mine business keeps one entangled in the material world and it's so hard to get rid of it. It's just like a hoarder. There are people who are hoarders, like my brother. He hoarded newspaper clippings. So by the time he was uh, in his 70s, his house was full of stacks and stacks of newspaper clippings from the 1940s to 1990s. Now, did he ever refer to them? No. No. It was just a stack like that. It went up, and had, there were many of the stacks in his office, right? And you had to, you know, sort of navigate around them, you know, because they were all over the place. And I asked him, I said, why are you keeping these? Things? Oh, I need them. I said, why? Well, I have to, maybe I have to refer to them. He never referred to them, right? But he never threw them out either. Then there, we had, there was this doctor that lived in our neighborhood. We used to call him Doc. He was a Jewish doctor. And he was, he was somewhat of a friend of my, my brother. They, would, they knew each other for years because we were like neighbors. When Doc died, he left all his books to my brother. So all his books were next to all the sacks also of the... Uh, Newspaper clippings. So now there's no room. He couldn't even breathe in his office. You know, all over the place there were things, right? And I said, to him, why are you keeping his books? Oh, I need them. I said, what do you need them for? <laughs> so I might refer to them. You know, there were a lot of books about sex and psychology and things like that. You know, so he just collected things. He was a collector. He just collected things, never used them. Right, and just cluttered everything, and, and and his mind got confused by it all, right? Because he kept thinking, "I need it." So my brother, my other brother, asked him, "What? Day, what happens when you die?" He said, "Oh, you have to keep everything." He said, "Well, why should I keep everything? You'll be dead." He said, "No, no, it's important. It's, uh, these are important things, right? They're not important things, right? They're all useless things." Right? So. You see, even after death, they're still attached to him. So this possessiveness, it's, you have possessiveness in crabs also. If you study the life of a crab, what does a crab do? It will kill something, and then it puts it somewhere, right? And it keeps it for when it gets hungry, right? So the crab is very possessive. And... Animals also are very possessive, like the spider. It'll kill, kill a, a uh, fly that gets caught in its net, and then it'll wrap it up with its uh, saliva string, right? And it puts it somewhere, stores it somewhere. And then whenever it gets hungry, it'll unwrap it and eat it, say. So it, it, it's, in, it's everywhere in nature, this possessiveness, it's not just human beings. It's it's insects. It's animals. It's crabs. You know. So unless, uh, as it says here, he should be free from desires and feelings of possessive. Now you don't even have to have something. It's the desire to have it also, which is entangling. The desire for possessiveness. I want this, I want that. Oh, why don't I don't have this? I'm not happy, I have to get this. And the possessiveness continues into death. At the moment of death, one's thinking, what's gonna to happen to this thing? What's gonna to happen to that? What's gonna to happen to my books? What's gonna to happen to my newspaper clippings? What's gonna to happen to my car, you know? And right after the death, they're worrying, who's gonna get the car? Who's gonna get this? Who's gonna get that? You see. So it's, it's a, very dangerous thing. Now, how can we rise above possessiveness? How can we rise above dualities? Oh, should I give my 
uh, paper clippings to a library. Oh, no. How about if I give it to my cousin? No, not him. How about if I, well, this duality, who should I give these things to, you know? So people are confused by duality based on false idea of possessiveness. So uh, unless we, we detach ourselves from possessiveness, as it's saying here, he should be free from desires and feelings of possessiveness. So desires and feelings, that, that doesn't mean you actually uh, take those things with you, but you, you have the desires and the feelings, which forces you to take birth again. Just like one time there was a man who died, and he went before Yamaraj. And Yamaraj says, very bad karma. He said, What's, what, 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 what do you mean bad karma? I said, very bad karma. He said, you're going to become a worm. He said, a worm? I, I was a human being. Well, that's over now. Your next birth is worm. He said, well, uh, can you at least do me a favor? He said, what's that? He said, let me choose where I can be a worm. He said, why, why do you care? He said, no, no, it's important. I said, okay, where do you want to be? He said, I want to be with my wife. He said, well, how do you want to be with your wife? He said, I don't know. Uh, can, can I tell you really where I want to be? He said, okay, where do you want to be? You want to be the worm in a stool? He said, no, no, that's icky. I said, okay, well, where do you want to be? He said, I want to be in the toilet. Not, not the toilet. He said, I want to be in the bathroom. He said, where in the bathroom? He said, I want to be in the sink. He said, you want to be outside the sink or inside the sink? He said, no, I want to be in the drain of the sink. So Yamaraj was confused. He said, why do you want to be there? He said, because she'll brush her teeth and spit, and it'll come down and it'll rub on my body, and I'll be with her. And Yamaraj was shocked. <laughs> he said, See how ignorant people are. <laughs> so even after death, even in the worm of a body, he wants to be, you know, he wants to be able to taste his wife's spit. You know. So this is this is dangerous, dangerous mentality, this possessiveness. And unless we rise above it, we're going to be stuck in the cycle of birth and death. So Prabhupada says In the purport, he says, all these perfections and precautions, in the previous two paragraphs he talked about perfections and precautions, are perfectly executed when one is directly in Krishna consciousness. Because direct Krishna consciousness means self-abnegation. Now that's a nice word, self Abnegation. Abnegation means you deny yourself sense gratification so that you can endow yourself with devotional service. <clears throat> Wherein there is very little chance for material possessiveness. Yeah, when there's self-abnegation, you're denying yourself sense gratification in order to be able to engage in Krishna consciousness. Just like in the morning, you you get up very early. You're denying yourself that sense gratification of sleeping more than you need. But what for? Not not just to sit around and meditate on 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 some light, or meditate on the tip of your nose, or meditate on nothing. It's to come to Mangalarti, chant Hare Krishna, and greet the deities and chant your rounds, and have Tulsi Puja, and so forth. So you're denying yourself sense gratification in order to engage your senses and body and mind in devotional service. That is real self-abnegation. The self-abnegation of my bodies is you deny yourself sense gratification to meditate on nothingness, or, or the tip of your nose, or the, or the light. And Prabhupada says, that near 
Gaia, or in, or in Gaia itself, there's a river called Falgu. And he said, but there's no water. However, if you put your hand in the sand, you'll see that there's water there. You don't see the water, but it's, it's underground. He said, this is the mentality of many sannyasis in Kali Yuga. So what did he mean? So he explained it. He said, on the outside, they are renounced. But on the inside, they are meditating all the time on sense gratification. Just like the Falgu River, you don't see the water. But if you put your hand in the sand, you'll touch the water. You see? <laughs> I was amazed when I heard that. I recently read that. But this is the problem. See, here, what does it say in this verse? It says, he should be free from desires and feelings. All those things are in the mind of possessiveness. So then Prabhupada says, Srila Rupa Goswami characterizes Krishna consciousness in this way. Anasaktasya vishayan yatarham upayunjitaha. Nirbande krishna sambande yukta vairagyam uchyate. Prapachikitaya buddhya hari sambandhu vastuna. Mumukshu bihi paritiyago vairagyam falgu katyate. So this is a very important verse from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And it says, when one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accepts everything in relation, in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated. Above possessiveness. You notice again that word possessiveness comes in, right? On the other hand, one who rejects everything without knowledge of its relationship to Krishna is not as complete in his renunciation. So this is the position of the, of the Mayavadis and, and, and personalists. They're not yukta vairagyam. They're just vairagyam. They're just renounced. But they're not renounced through connection to Krishna. You see? So yukta vairagya means that you reject everything material for your sense gratification, but you use everything material for Krishna's pleasure. That's real renunciation. And false renunciation is falgu falgu vairagya is you just reject everything, including Krishna, say as Maya. So that is, that is incomplete or false renunciation. It is renunciation, but it's not complete. Why does it say it's not complete? Because the Maya body is still attached to the strongest possessiveness, that is to possess the position of Krishna, to become Krishna, to become one with Krishna. Say. It doesn't even, they don't even use the word Krishna, though. They say Brahman. Right? So this, this, this is the greatest possessiveness, the greatest at material attachment, is to want to be God himself. And therefore, when they attain that position of Brahman, they fall down eventually because they still have this feeling of possessiveness. This is mine. Just like uh, uh, Madhavacharya, he, he differed from Sankaracharya. Sankaracharya says, oh, I mean, uh, Sankaracharya and also uh, um, Patanjali, the false followers of Patanjali, they say, Tatvamasi, I am that. When they go through so much renunciation to attain vision of uh, Paramatma in their heart, in the last moment, they don't say, they say, I am that. Say, Tatvamasi. But Madhavacharya said, that's not what Tatvamasi means. Tatvamasi means, I am his. So you see, one little word difference, it's a whole universe of difference. There's a difference between I am that and I am his. 
I am his, meaning I belong to him. I am that, meaning I am, I am God. You see. So, and and uh, Madhavacharya says, this is not even uh, Sanskrit or English. I am that. Right? Uh, how can you be something that you're not? So, uh, but that's, we become blinded by the desire of possessiveness. I want to possess that position. Although I'm not, I'm not that thing, but I want to be that thing. And by this illusion in my mind that I have merged into the oneness of Brahman. Okay, so this, these two verses by Rupa Goswami are extremely important because there's a difference between rejecting everything, that's false renunciation, but real renunciation is using everything in the service of Krishna. That's real. And rejecting everything, it's not real. It's maya. It's an illusion. You cannot reject something that doesn't belong to you. You can't own something that doesn't belong to you. But you can use something in the service of the person that it actually belongs to, and that's Krishna. Okay, we'll stop there. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada Kijay.